Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching 90 Day Fiancé. Let's get to it. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. As I always say, don't use YouTube as a replacement for therapy. If you need a therapist, get one. You deserve it. Everyone does. Let's watch. He's got things that he wants to do with my dad, um, and it doesn't involve us. When I started working with my dad like five years ago, I had a lot of ideas too, but my dad didn't entertain any of my ideas. So I'm just seeing it for what it really is. Right. So some of you have commented below, and I've agreed with you, that it seems quite possible that the real problem here in the family is not Andre. It is the conflict between the siblings and Libby and the siblings and Chuck. So we just hear there that for her, she has been trying to get the father, Chuck, to agree with her proposals for business. And she's saying he wouldn't agree to any of those things. And that probably hurts her feelings. And I speculate, I really have no idea, but I've seen this before. When there is divorce in families, there is usually a strife before and after the divorce, which can cause the children to feel neglected. And when the children feel neglected by the parents, they're kind of in a bind where on one hand, they want to strike back at the parents and say, how dare you neglect me? How dare you treat me badly? But the bind is if they communicate that to them, they risk losing their parents even more. They're worried that the parents will reject them because of the child's anger. So what the child will do is they will suppress, suppress, suppress. And when you suppress, you have to displace it somewhere. And you might have displaced it to each other. When you see siblings fighting with each other a lot, it can often be a result of that displacement of anger towards your parents and you displace it towards your siblings because it's safer to yell at your siblings than it is to your parent because you don't really care if your siblings don't love you anymore as much as you care about your parents loving you. Or you displace it to your sibling's husband who is an easy target because he's an outsider and the family has general xenophobic attitudes so they can all agree that he's a, he's a ridiculous foreigner and they can attack him. So it's interesting that Rebecca is actually drawing that connection. She's saying, of course I'm mad at Andre because every time I tried to get something done with my dad, he never listened to me. It's interesting that she's making that connection because those aren't logical, that's not a logical connection. The fact that Chuck is doing things for Andre has nothing to do with the fact that you feel hurt that your dad isn't listening to you. Your real problem is with Chuck, not with Andre. It really seems that way to me, but I don't know, I'd have to ask him. My dad is being manipulated by him and I can't take it anymore. And if they grew up with, with Libby being the baby and the chosen one, the spoiled one in the family, which it seems that a lot of people agree that that was the case, I think even Libby admits to that, that the siblings would be very upset at Libby for having that special spoiled connection with the father and are also displacing that anger and hurt to Andre. You're in the middle of this too. You're listening Listen to my to dad. Can we hurry up? The babies are crying. Just is he yelling at my wife or what? Dude. I wouldn't let him yell at her. This is not what I wanted. Exactly. Yeah, like, I, I have to clarify this. some Why are you saying all this stuff, Dad? I heard all your conversations. No, for real, Jack. Like, but she dad, doesn't like. Like you, you you said like, but so Andre could do really good for himself if he just said nothing. <laughs> just. Right now we have Rebecca and the dad talking, which is a good conversation that needs to be happening. Andre really should just be quiet because uh, I think if he interferes, it's going to cause more problems for him and for everyone. What you said was shady. Now you're really... No, what I want no. is us not to talk about business on the RV. Then why I already said you? that. So I don't know, but this would have been a perfect opportunity for Chuck to remind his daughter that Andre and him have a deal, and it's Chuck's decision. And to tell Rebecca, look, uh, me and Andre, I'm going to help him out, and y'all just have to deal with it. Then, hopefully, Chuck would intuit, I think my kids are actually displacing their anger and hurt from me onto Andre. Maybe if I spent more time with Rebecca and made her feel more loved and secure, maybe this whole thing would go down. I don't know, maybe Chuck will notice that. But this can't happen going forward. There's no way that we'll be able to finish this trip if that continues. So 
they have to make a choice. I'm not doing this right now. This is a this is not a boat. It's a holiday. Chill, chill. Like, come on, Chuck. Chill. We're crammed in on this. Like, the babies that are screaming, like, chill. Yeah. So Andre is all amped up, and it's harder for him to come back down. And yeah, it's unfortunate because there was an opportunity there to actually resolve it if Chuck had done something different. I mean, it's good that he said, hey, everyone, let's calm down. But I think that if a family therapist were there, they could actually help get to the bottom of this conflict. See Andre, and I walk to the staircase, and there she is, halfway up the stairs, walking up there alone with no supervision. <laughs> and she tripped, trying to take her next step, and she flew backwards, and I caught her, but it was a really close call. Wow, that's upsetting. So what it sounds like is that Libby left the child with Andre to watch. Andre went to the bathroom and didn't tell anyone to watch the child. The child was crawling up the stairs and the child almost had a huge accident. That's, that's really concerning. And then Libby was upset at Andre and then we heard a little, I don't know if I showed the clip, but Andre was just screaming back at Libby, being defensive instead of saying, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, incidentally, by the way, that's how I, I don't know if you can tell, I have a scar right here. I don't know if you can see it, but if you've ever wondered where I got that, that's where I got it. I was like one year old and I fell down the stairs <laughs> and I actually almost could have seriously injured myself if not died. I uh, fell between, it was a like deck stairs and I fell between and I was holding on as, as a, like a 18 month old child and somebody ran up and, and grabbed me. Um, I was actually following my brother and sister up the stairs, and I'd never learned how to crawl back downstairs. And so when they came back down the stairs, I just turned around and went head down <laughs> and, and tumbled in. My lip was torn apart, and they had to put stitches in. It's, you know, it's still... It's interesting. The older I get, it kind of migrates. It used to be higher up, and now it's, like, further down. <laughs> anyway. So uh, I have a connection with Andre and Libby's child. Your mistake, I was not the one looking out for my daughter while I was going to the bathroom, but the house is full of family. There's like plenty of people to watch her, but nobody did. And I'm very frustrated about this. Very frustrated that my wife blames it on me. Good thing I ran around the corner. Her freaking dad's not watching her. Okay, so hard to tell. It sounds like there's a possibility that Andre was under the sound impression that other people would have watched the child. Clearly that wasn't the case though, and you would wanna make sure if you're the parent to, that someone is watching her, which it doesn't sound like he did um, you know, in a very uh, responsible way. So again, why wouldn't you just say, oh my God, I'm so sorry, is the child okay? Oh, I went to the bathroom, I, th I thought other people, oh, you know, it just sounds so scary. Why wouldn't you just be that way? Why would you get so defensive about it? Oh, is she okay, Libby? She flew backwards and I caught her just in time and freaking cut my finger. What finger's cut? I just need a Band-Aid, okay? It's not a big deal. You want 911, maybe? You want the ambulance? I saved our daughter from going down the stairs you because you daughter? self- Wow, pretty ugly. So, and immature, just mocking your wife. Why wouldn't you just say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I thought other people were watching her. I mean, why would you act this immature about it and this contemptuous about it? Libby's not even freaking out that much. I mean, I wouldn't say she's freaking out at all. She's just concerned about her daughter and she's upset and saying to her husband, why didn't you watch the child? I thought I handed the child off to you, our child off to you. And to see him behaving this way is, um, it's upsetting. All right, well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. If you didn't know already, we are having our 13 year anniversary for the podcast on August 7th, 2021. So if you wanna join us on YouTube Live, we're gonna do a 13 hour straight YouTube Live from 10 a.m. in the morning Seattle time until 11 p.m. Seattle time. <laughs> We've done, a, we did an 11 year, we did an 11 hour podcast or, you know, live stream two years ago. We did a 12 hour last year and now we're doing 13 hours. I guess at some point we're gonna have to choose a different uh, scheme for our anniversary show. But anyway, if you wanna send a card, cause sometimes people like to send cards for our anniversary if you want, or a gift or something, we'll open it up on the air 
and you can send it to the following address, 10002 Aurora Avenue North, Suite 36, number 214, Seattle, Washington, 98133-9334. That's 10002 Aurora Avenue, Aurora, like Aurora Borealis. Avenue North, Suite 36, number 214, Seattle, Washington, 98133-9334. But at the very least, join us on August 7th for our 13-hour, uh, uh, 13th anniversary show. Me and Umberto will be in the, uh, in the studio here recording it. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do. <laughs>